Okay girls, if you get a complicated molecule like this in the exam, which is what we suspect you could get because we looked at some of the previous exams, the easiest way to tackle this is to start by looking at the types of bonds that you have. So let's start with this one here. We have a carbon, carbon bond, carbon, single bond, carbon. So I will go mark them off, how many I've got, and I'll scratch them off as I do it. So that's one, that is two, that is three. So if I look at it, I don't see any more. So that means carbon, carbon, I have three bonds, and I'll go to the table and I look up my carbon, carbon bond value, and I see it's 348 joules. So it's three times 348 joules, kilojoules. And when I multiply that out, I see that my answer is 1044 kilojoules. So now I've done that one, I need to find the, the other bonds that are involved. So the next one that I see right in front of me here is a carbon double bond oxygen. So I will mark this one off, carbon double bond oxygen. And then I'll look and see if there's any more carbon double bond oxygen bonds. And I see that there's another one there at the top. So I will mark it off. I don't see any more, which means I have two carbon double bond oxygen bonds. I will look at my table, carbon, um, carbon double bond oxygen, and I see it's 745 kilojoules. So it's 745 kilojoules. If I multiply that, it's 1,490 kilojoules. Then if I look at my table, my next one that I see here is a carbon single bond nitrogen. There's one, so carbon single bond nitrogen, so I see one there. Here is another one, two carbon single bond nitrogen. Here is three. Here is four. Here is five, six, and I don't see any more. So I have six carbon single bond nitrogen bonds. If I use the table there to look it up, I see that it's 305 kilojoules to break one, and I have six. So I multiply the six by 305. That gives me 1,830 kilojoules of energy. I then do the same for the next one. So let's see, here is a nitrogen hydrogen bond. I see it right here. So nitrogen hydrogen single bond, there's one. If I look at it, I don't see any more nitrogen hydrogen bonds. So that means there's only one. And to break one of those bonds is um, 386 kilojoules. So one times 386 is 386 kilojoules. So that one was, was fairly easy. Now the next one is nitrogen, single bond hydrogen. Um, in other words, I'm looking at the one that I see here, nitrogen, uh, single bond hydrogen. Um, and if I look at it, I see that this only, sorry, I've just done nitrogen, single bond hydrogen. Now I'm repeating it. Sorry. Let's cancel this one. So that the next one is carbon, double bond, carbon, this one over here. So that's one of them. I don't see any more carbon, double bond, carbon. So that means there's only one and that is 614 kilojoules. If I look it up on the table, 614 kilojoules. There's only one that gives me 614 kilojoules. Right, if I look at my molecule, and then I see here is a carbon double bond nitrogen bond here. Um, and I only see one of them. So carbon double bond nitrogen. There's only one. And the bond energy is 615 kilojoules to break it. So there's only one. So that's a total of 615 kilojoules. When I look at my molecule, I see the only one that I have left is these ones over here. There's three of them. That's three carbon single bond hydrogen. So carbon single bond hydrogen. There's three of them. 
multiply it by 416 kilojoules and where do I get the 416 kilojoules to remind you carbon single bond hydrogen 416 I go look all these bond energy up on the table they will give you the table so if I multiply this 3 times 614 kilojoules that is going to be 1248 kilojoules of energy I then add all of these energy values together which gives me 7227 kilojoules of energy so if I add all of them up then I will find the total energy that I need to break all these bonds